Hello, and welcome to Change the Face of Yoga, teaching toddlers through golden oldies. I'm very excited to be talking to lots of yoga teachers who will explain their passion for teaching yoga to students with different ages, physical fitness levels, wellness levels, and different goals. They will explain the benefits of yoga for these students and will be including teacher tips and pose modifications. I am Stephanie Cunningham of Yoga Lightness, and I've been teaching over 50s for 10 years. So this area is my passion and the passion of many other yoga teachers that you will be listening to in this series. Thank you so much for listening, and let's get started. This is episode 60 of Changing the Face of Yoga. I have Melissa Turnock with me today, and we're going to talk about TRE. Well, I think you'll be quite interested in what she has to say. Let's listen. This is Changing the Face of Yoga, and I have a very interesting guest today. Her name is Melissa Turnock, and we're going to discuss TRE, which I, quite frankly, had never heard of before. But Melissa is an expert in this particular area, and she's going to tell you how she has melded TRE and yoga together. Now, she started her work life as, as in speech pathology, but she decided that now all of her work involves getting back into the body and its wisdom. She's been teaching Pilates for 15 years now, and she works mostly with people that have rehab issues. And she's often had yoga instructors with injuries that have come to her for help. She also offers yoga and finds that the, these two different modalities are compl complement each other very well. Uh, she is moving now towards emotional and physical release work via the embodiment focus and offering body wisdom sessions to clients, which incorporates body, spirit, and energy to facilitate a return to life. And it sounds like she really enjoys it, which is good. <laughs> so welcome, Melissa. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that introduction? Uh, no, I think that sounds comprehensive for where I'm at <laughs> right now, yes. Okay, great. All right, you said in what you sent me that you teach a class, a yoga class, that leads to neurogenic tremoring. It's a trauma tension release exercise that's used to release tension and help return the uh, nervous system to the parasympathetic state. So could we explore that a little? Uh, I did a little research on it, and uh, it was really quite fascinating. It was very different from anything I'd ever seen before. So what what led you to add this to your skill set? TRE crossed my path, gosh, maybe 10 years ago. I was involved with the Pilates Professional Association, and a number of Pilates instructors were going to workshops in TRE and wanting to claim their professional development points. So that crossed my desk, and I was totally unaware of TRE. So I started chatting to Richmond Heath, the physio slash Pilates teacher in Melbourne who had brought TRE to Australia. And... I, I clearly remember the day that I got the joy of really listening to Richmond. I, I was sitting on the steps in a building in North Sydney listening to him talk about what TRE was and its purpose and how it, it applied to any a movement modality like Pilates or yoga. And my first thought was, oh, my goodness, I need to do this. This sounds, you know, surprisingly these things cross our paths, don't they, when we really need them. And so... That the introduction came and, and at that point I just thought I want to get this in my body, I want to try this. So I started attending the workshops, that the weekend workshops that Richmond and David Baselli, the original founder of TRE from America, were running in Randwick and everything just went from there. I was absolutely wrapped in it from the very beginning. Can you give us a, a definition of TRE in case people haven't heard of it and don't know what we're talking about here? TRE is, stands, originally it was framed around trauma release exercises and it was used 
by David Baselli, who was in war-torn regions and he was minister of the church as well as a social worker and was, was with these groups of people who were in a traumatised state following war or natural disasters. And he used his skills to assist them to come out of the absolute shock and captivating terror that things like that can happen by shaking their bodies. And I guess what he probably saw was the tremoring and the shaking in the people quite naturally and spontaneously. You know, we've probably all experienced if you've, you know, perhaps during giving birth or just after a car accident or you might see your puppy dog shake in a thunderstorm. This is a really mammalian kind of natural response. And so he saw that happening and he started to just like ac actively bring tremoring on in very large groups of people in open spaces. There's no capacity for the psychologists and the support team to come in to provide one-to-one -one support. So he just created this, this modality that was allowing us to shake and it's that natural involuntary shake a little different to some workshops you might go to where they tell you to start shaking and they'll say shake your hands okay now let's move it into the shoulders and the spine and this is actually stimulating the tremoring through fatiguing the leg and the hip muscles a little and it becomes totally involuntary and and you you get to participate and re regulate but also just almost watch your muscle your muscles and your body do this amazing thing i was taught when to start with a yoga class that you go into a prone varasana basically and so you have a belt around your feet and it comes up a, a behind your waist it's basically a hip opener and so your knees are out to the side and a lot of times people's legs start tremoring after a while now i thought that yeah. was muscle fatigue but it might actually be something different. Is is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had a client the other day who rides his bicycle long distances and he said, when I get off my bike after 100 k's, I've, I've got that shake in my legs. And I said, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yes, the muscles are fatigued in the way that we would understand it, but they've also built up so much tension in them that they need to actually almost get rid of that that tension and and tightness that's built up in the muscles so that's a very sort of immediate experience of the shaking and the kind of applications of the TRE that that we use in the classes is much more long held sort of tension in the body having been in stressful environments stressful upbringings times when your body has contracted and, and this might happen so many times in your life through direct traumas or less, you know, direct traumas. And so we're invoking that same shaking. And, and I, you know, I'm not a physiology expert in terms of the exact muscle fiber activity, but they're, they're kind of the same thing, Stephanie. It feels like you're just entering from a different sort of angle to get someone to release the tension and the tiredness in the muscle. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I always stop them and put blocks under their knees, I, but I won't do that anymore. <laughs> now that I know that this has a really good beneficial reason to be done, uh, I just thought that they were they were losing it. I, I can't not tremor in, in my yoga classes anymore. I, I know exactly what you mean. Like you'll see someone with that shake, particularly if you do any adductor work, and this is where the tremors tend to start in the adductors. And I know for me now I can't not tremor whenever I do Setu Bandhasana and I just have to put a lid on it because like, okay, this is not my trauma session. But isn't it fun to think that you could almost just, just put a pause button on the flow of the asana and just say, let's just shake for a couple of minutes and see how we feel. You know, it's almost like the body's going, hey, I've got a bit more tension to let go of. Mm. And definitely the way that yoga is going with the listen to your body and do what it needs to do. So this is definitely, I think in that, arena yeah it's really fascinating i'm getting a new a new look at something that that's happened in my classes for i don't you know years and years you've got this education and experience with tre what do you actually do in a yoga class to bring tre into it i let people know up front that we're going to do some tension release exercises because i don't want to surprise them with turning up to a yoga class because 
sometimes, like when I first started this class, I, I just called it straight out TRE, tension release class, let's say. That was like what I did for a while. And then I just thought, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to use the six or seven traditional TRE exercises that we were taught in our training to fatigue the adductors and the leg muscles a little bit. I'm going to just do asana because as you've already said, we can pretty easily tire out the legs. I let them know up front if they're brand new, we're going to do some tremoring tonight. We're going to do some yoga movements that make your legs a little bit tired and it's certainly not like boot camp tired but it's it's just enough to sort of stretch the muscles and fatigue them but they'll start to gently shake and by the time we've done those those yoga poses you'll get to rest on the floor and let your body tremor and then we have the juiciest shavasana ever afterwards <laughs> because you can imagine after someone's tremored for 15 to 20 minutes which is the proportion of the class that I would let the tremoring go on there is there's this period of integration and almost like sponge like experience that you want your tissues and your fascia and your blood vessels and your nerve fibers to be able to just integrate and absorb so the class is maybe 30 minutes asana then we're down on the mat doing the last two exercises then we have 15 to 20 minutes tremoring and then I have at least a 15 minute shavasana which which is a gift in itself isn't it because we rarely get that much shavasana time in a yoga class so it goes for about 75 minutes are you also doing some breathing in there or is this pure asana? It depends. I might start with some breathing at the beginning of the class. TRE and the process of tremoring has a big focus on breathing, certainly from my perspective as the facilitator. As we use the breath in our yoga classes, if someone isn't breathing deeply or holding their breath unbeknownst to them, it's going to inhibit the process of the tremoring. And we always use the phrase, your body will only tremor if it doesn't feel, if it feels safe. And if you're not actually breathing very much, then there's the level of, of unsafety in the body. Why is there no breath there? You know, what, what's happening? Mm -hmm. She's holding a breath, that kind of internal response. So the breath application comes all the way through the asana, I am watching them and supporting them with their breath. And when the tremoring is starting to kick off, a lot of times you'll just notice that they're so amazed and so curious about it that they do actually really start to limit their breath. So I tend to talk about the breath more so in take a really big full one. Now see if you can make a soft vocalisation as you exhale. Let's get that those throat muscles and that those vocal cords to let go a little bit and give that body the high vibes that it's it's okay to let go now. So that's that's more of the focus for the breathing. What kinds of benefits have your students seen from this particular combination of yoga and TRE? It was funny, a recent class, one of the girls communicated. So I always communicate with the students the day after TRE because I'm fascinated to see what 12, 24 hours has brought because it's one of those sort of things that sometimes you don't know how the body will integrate until the next day. So I always get lovely emails or texts back from the students. And Jane said recently, she said it was like two for the price of one. I got some yoga and I got this tremoring and this relaxation. The kind of things that they say, I mean, very commonly people say, I slept so well last night. Like I slept through the whole night and I don't usually get to do that. Alertness. A lot of people say, I woke up today and I feel so clear. You know, there's no sort of haze or heaviness. I just feel really clear and alert. I've had ladies, like recently a lady talk about almost a profound spiritual experience in the, during the act of tremoring in that she felt like she just had the, the, the movement through her body was not of her body. It was almost like a, a spiritual kind of shuffling around in the body. I've had people say that their anxiety lessens a little bit and I think that's the most common thread I've seen is that people who are anxious before coming to the class and say I suffer you know I have a lot of anxiety in my life with prolonged use and I'm just talking about you know two to three times a week tops for three or four weeks they they're starting to report that they really do notice their anxiety levels are diminished that they can be a little bit more clearer and make 
a clearer choice in reaction to things. Bodies, like they say, their bodies feel softer. If you tremor for a while, you find the tremors move to injury sites. And I've seen people say, oh, my goodness, my shoulder feels amazing. But I've had this shoulder problem for ages. It, it's just numerous, Stephanie. There's so many interesting things that I see and my own personal experience very briefly I think the tremoring came into my life at a time where I had almost imprisoned my heart and imprisoned my own awareness of who I was in this cage of my body and the tremoring felt like it was a doorway into opening up to emotional states that I I'd had never had before and didn't even know I was capable of so that's kind of for me it's it's been most noticeable in that sense healing, you know, the, the stuff that was locked up. You're telling me that not only do you get some physical benefits from it, but also some emotional benefits. Yeah, and uh, um, you you often see a wariness in people before they start the tremoring process because it's so unfamiliar. And I'll, I'll always say, look, you might experience some emotional content during the tremoring, but it's incredibly rare. I, I can count on one hand the number of people during tremoring that have had emotion come to the surface and I've always known that person beforehand anyway and it's a really an honor to just be able to just approach them comfort them say just lay on your side here's the tissues when you feel ready start again so that's during the tremoring but afterwards I think that if you think about what we're doing in the physiology of the muscles and particularly the fascia, and I'm always picturing people's fascia when they're tremoring, it's like we're just dislodging blocked energy. And, and if the context is right in a class, I'll refer to that in the description and the lead up to the session. I don't always do that depending on who's in the room. But I really believe that if we if we tremor involuntarily but we're regulating and integrating it and I teach those important things through the class, it's almost like we're loosening up whatever's been blocked and let's say it's emotional energy, let's say it's, it's just physical in the upper shoulders or something like that. I think it has the capacity to let the energy move through so that emotional energy can start to perhaps come to the surface a little bit. And it doesn't happen during the class most of the time. But for some people, and it won't be everyone, because the experience of tremoring, I believe, is just organically suited to what that person needs and what they can integrate each time. That's how wonderfully wise our bodies are. For some people, there can definitely be some getting a little bit more in touch with some of the emotions beneath the surface. And it, I'm not saying that would just be the TRE. There's probably a numerous things in their life that are facilitating that. But I think this is a lovely organic body-based way to almost, you know, let the mind step aside and the body start to express what's going on. You said that you teach them about regulating during class, I assume for what happens afterwards you can correct me if I'm wrong. So how do you go about doing that? Because I think that could be kind of scary if, you know, all of these emotions that have been blocked suddenly can, can move a little more freely. So during the process of the class, I'm looking for things like the irregular breathing or the lack of breathing, perhaps. I'm looking for eye contact. Now, my wonderful teacher, Richmond, always used to joke that while you're tremoring, you should be able to have a conversation with me. And this, this relates to that social engagement act, act, um, aspect of the vagus um, theory work. So you need to be in your body. You need to be embodying the tremors, aware of what's going on with your body. So if you, if you can't look me in the eye when you're tremoring and engage in a conversation, then I, I can suspect that you're, you're disconnecting or dissociating from the tremor experience, which could be a pattern in your daily life. You know, that could be the way you handle anything that doesn't make you feel entirely comfortable. So I'm looking for your ability to chat to me. Sometimes people want their eyes closed while they're tremoring. I'll say open them for a while, register the room we're in, become aware of who's next to you, turn, have a look at how your neighbor's tremoring, all of those sort of things that bring them sort of online with what's going on and then during the class also I get them to stop and start a few times and that's really important that everyone understands that they they're actually in control of the tremors and that's as simple as sliding your legs out to flat 
So we tremor in that laying on your, that supine, knees bent, feet flat sort of position that's a comfortable one to sustain for a while. And then I'll say, everyone, slide your legs out to flat. What do you notice? And 99% of the time that stops the tremoring because we've brought that more cortical control over the top of the involuntary nature. So the involuntary aspect of tremoring comes from the more primitive part of the brain that makes our heart beat, our digestion work without us telling it to do those things. But then if we employ, you know, the newer aspects of the brain control and say, okay, I'm going to stop now, we can do that by sliding the legs out. So those, a combination of those two things is me making sure that they're actually checking in that they're okay with what's happening. And I will say to them, are you okay with this? And they'll say, well, it's a bit weird and it's a bit curious, but yes, I'm okay with it. And if they're okay, that's fabulous. Their system isn't in overwhelm. But if they go into overwhelm, you know, that that's not a, a a productive session. So that's the role I play in in checking in with people as it's happening. Thank you so much, Melissa. You gave me some great information and I'm sure our listeners really enjoyed it. If you would like to contact Melissa to find out more or to possibly go to one of her classes, her email is mel at pitwaterpilates.com.au. Her website is www.pitwaterpilates.com.au and her Facebook is Pit Pilates and Yoga. Thank you again, Melissa. You are a great guest and I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you for that wonderful interview. If you would like to be a guest on Changing the Face of Yoga, please go to my website, www.yogalightness.com.au and under the Changing the Face of Yoga tab, you can complete Be Our Guest form. After reviewing the form and finding it applicable to this podcast, we will send you a link to schedule an interview. Please download, review, and tell your friends of any podcasts that are of interest to you and to them. If you would like to contact me, send an email to info at yogalightness.com.au. And thank you for listening to Changing the Face of Yoga.